Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now I am mostly known as a physical game collector. I've been doing it for years, I absolutely love it, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. However, many of you might be surprised to learn that actually I have a fairly large collection of EverDrives, and I use them actually quite a bit. And there are a number of reasons for that, but primarily it's because, well, they're very convenient, they're very quick to just pop in and play some of your favorite games, but also they're a really great way to discover games that you've never known about, maybe play import games, and also discover those hidden gems. Now, before we get started, I do wanna mention that I've had EverDrives in my game collection for several years now. However, recently I was sent a new batch of models from stoneagegamer.com for review, and I'll put a link down to their site if you wanna get more information about those. And I have nine of these to show you, and I'm gonna start with one I was really surprised to see. That of course is the Neo Geo Pocket Color. They have an EverDrive available for it, and this is something that I don't think I ever thought I would see. Now, if you're not familiar with the Neo Geo Pocket Color, well, that's because it really wasn't that big of a success here in the US, and that's a damn shame because it's a very cool little handheld that actually I enjoy collecting quite a bit. But again, getting an EverDrive where you can just dump all of the retail games onto it, plus homebrews, imports, stuff like that, that's pretty awesome. Now, the way that this thing works is kind of interesting because essentially you have two tabs at the top there. You'll see that you have a flash tab and then also a card tab. And basically you use the option button on the Neo Geo Pocket Color to toggle between the two. And then essentially what you do is you go over to the card tab. That's where you have all your ROMs that you've put onto it. And then what you need to do is select the ones you wanna play. And then what that does is it copies it over to the flash area. And you have a very limited amount of flash area, but basically that's where that's where it needs to go if you wanna play the game. Does that make sense? So you can't just play them directly off of the card. It actually has to be copied over into the flash area. And that does take a bit of time copying the game over from the card to the flash area, depending on the size of the game. It can take upwards of say a minute or so. And the space over on the flash side isn't infinite either. You see here that I have, I think seven games copied over there. And that's about all that you can put, maybe one more depending on the size. So what you end up doing is kind of copying over, you know, your favorite games that you wanna play fairly quickly, but then you can remove them and put other ones on there. But again, you kind of have to deal with the copying thing. So it's not optimal, but I suspect that's probably the best that they could do with a, you know, low powered handheld like this. But the games themselves are awesome. And if you have never played a Neo Geo Pocket Color, it is definitely a treat. It's a really cool handheld. It's got a great clicky thumbstick. Uh, there's a lot of great games that play on it. The only real downside to this handheld is that there's no backlit screen. And so playing it, you end up having to either play in front of like say, you know, a window or a light source, stuff like that. So actually capturing uh, the footage for this video was a little bit of a challenge. As you see here, I have to have those lights directly on it in order for the camera to capture it. But it's cool to have an EverDrive for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. It's definitely cool. This is another one that I never thought we'd actually see, and that is for the Atari Lynx handheld. This is another example of a gaming system that just wasn't as successful as it probably could have been in North America, yet I love collecting for this handheld. I actually have a lot of physical games for it. A lot of them are really cheap, but the thing is, they're getting kind of hard to find out in the wild. You can find them sometimes, you know, at retro gaming expos, but actually finding the physical games when you're going to garage sales or if you're going to thrift stores or pawn shops, you'll never see them there, it'd be very rare. And so having an EverDrive with the entire game collection on there is pretty sweet. And unlike the Neo Geo Pocket Color, this one doesn't have to do any sort of preload or pre-copy of the games. You just play them straight off the card. And what's cool about this is that it comes pre-installed with four officially licensed games from Pico Interactive. So even if you don't have any, you know, Atari Lynx games in your collection, well, you get this and you immediately have four. Here's another EverDrive that I use an awful lot in my game collection. This of course is for the TurboGrafx-16 slash PC Engine. And again, this is another system that's really fun to explore because 
you know, the, the TurboGrafx-16 wasn't a huge success in North America, but it had a decent library and some really fun games to play. But then you can jump in and explore the Japanese PC Engine games, and basically those combined is over 670 commercially licensed games that are available and playable on this EverDrive. And so there's a lot there to explore and discover. I think that's why I enjoy this so much, because I actually don't have hardly any Japanese PC Engine games. I have a few TurboGrafx games. They're getting kind of hard to find. And I'll tell you what, I put this in. You see me, I'm using actually the Turbo Express here. That's one of my favorite ways to do it on the handheld. I just play random games, you know? And a lot of them are in Japanese. You may not know what's going on, but you know, once you kind of dig into the game and actually get to the gameplay, there's always something interesting to discover. Moving on to the Game Boy, this is another one that I use an awful lot. And the reason is because, well, quite frankly, there are over a thousand original Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. So there's just a ton of stuff to explore here. Here's where I need to talk a little bit about the naming convention used on these EverDrives. You may have noticed here that this says X7, and in this video, you'll notice that there'll be some X5s, maybe some X3s. Now what's going on here is that they have different levels of complexity and features depending on the price that you wanna pay. So for instance, with this one, there is an X5 and an X7, and the X5 starts at about $90, and the X7 starts around $130, depending on the features that you need. So for instance, the X5 at the lower price doesn't support save states or a real-time clock, where the X7 at $130 does. So depending on what you're looking for and what you need when you're gaming, you can choose the price that's right for you. And that's gonna vary per EverDrive and the features that they include. What's nice is that Stone Age Gamer actually lays these out on a grid in a full comparison. So that way you can decide, do you wanna go with the cheaper one, save a little bit of money, or maybe you're just hardcore, you need all the features, all the functionality, and well, you can make that decision. Moving on to the N64 is another one that I use an awful lot and I have for years now, actually. And that's because primarily, you know, when I do an N64 video for my YouTube channel, Yes, I have a lot of the physical games, but so much easier, so much more convenient for me to just pop in the EverDrive and I have the entire library there, plus other regions. And I guess that's the thing with these EverDrives is that, you know, I don't consider that this is a replacement for my physical game collection, because I still really like having the physical games on the shelves with the manuals and the boxes and all that sort of stuff. But again, it's just so much more convenient to, to use this right here. This is also where I should probably mention that if you are in the market for these and you've looked on eBay, you may have noticed that the name and also the labels and the look of some of these has changed over the years. For instance, you see my original Ultra EverDrive 64 here that I've used for years. Well, that now is just called the EverDrive 64 and some of the artwork has changed. Now, it's my understanding that they needed to change some of these for legal issues, but if you're on eBay or you go into a retro gaming store and you see both of these, they're basically the same thing. The newer ones probably have new features, but these old ones work and function just great. The one thing to note though, is that these older ones were a mix of standard SD cards, and then some of them would have micro SD, and now all of the new EverDrives just use micro SD. And here's another one that changed its name. So this is my original SD2 SNES, which now is called the FX Pack Pro. And this is one where you kind of have to decide for yourself what features you want and how much you want to pay because the cheaper one starts at about $90. And then this Pro that you're looking at here, well, that's almost double at $197. But the big advantage of getting the Pro is that you get all of the extra Super Nintendo chip compatibility. So for instance, if you're gonna wanna play those eight Super FX or Super FX 2 games, well, you're gonna wanna get the Pro. Now, one of the cool features is that you can go in and actually tweak how fast the processor runs, which might give you a few more frames, which is really nice because some of those games can run pretty, pretty badly. And now we get to something pretty interesting. So this is the Mega SD by a company called Terra Onion. Now, when this was originally released, people were blown away because essentially what they did is they recreated the Sega CD and the Mega CD in hardware emulation via a FPGA. 
What that means is you no longer needed your Sega CD hardware plugged into your Sega Genesis to play those game backups. And I have to say, I do like this product a lot. It's very high quality, very powerful, really well supported, uh, just supports a ton of features and it's got a really cool interface. I also like how it supports the file type ISO and not just bins. That makes it way easier to get games on here that will run with the CD audio and things like that. But it ain't cheap. It actually costs $270. So that is quite a pill to swallow if you are looking at these. But the good news is actually Crix was not to be outdone. He actually took some extra time and created three versions of his called the Mega Everdrive. And so he has an X3, X5, and an X7 versions of this, depending on your price point and also the features that you're looking for. And so you see the X7 version here, which of course is the more expensive version, but it's still cheaper than the Terra Onion option. And you know, to my eyes, they actually are very similar. Every game I threw at it just worked exactly the same, no matter which one I had. But again, I do like the Terra Onion interface. I know it's kind of dumb to say so, but I think it looks pretty cool. It looks very retro and old school. And again, having ISO file support, that was actually pretty nice when I was getting this set up. It means I didn't have to convert one file type to another. Whatever I threw at it, it just ran. But again, I think you would be happy with whatever version you get. Again, just go to stoneagegamer.com and look at the chart comparing them all. And then just decide, you know, do you need in-game menus? Do you need save states? Stuff like that. And then we get to the classic original Nintendo Entertainment System, another EverDrive that I end up using an awful lot, primarily for convenience. And again, it's just so nice having every game ever released on just one cartridge. And in many ways, this is the one that started it all for a lot of us. I have my original one here that again, I've used for years and then going to the new version here, very similar in feel for sure. Uh, the interface looks almost exactly the same. The only difference really is that again, the old one had a standardized SD card and the new one is micro. And so if you have one of these older ones, you know, I'd be hard pressed to really recommend that you upgrade because you probably don't need to really. But the good news is that they're well supported and you can find them almost everywhere. And they have gotten new firmware updates over the last couple of years, fixing little bugs and compatibility issues as people find them. And then here's one I haven't messed with yet, but I intend to. You see it here, it's called the Mode or the Multi-Optical Disc Emulator, also created by Terra Onion. And so what this is, it's a hardware emulator for the optical drive for either the Dreamcast or the Sega Saturn. And these have become quite popular over the last couple of years. Uh, you see, I have one here installed in my orange GameCube. So it's replacing the optical drive in there with an SD card. And then you just put, you just put the disc images in there and it functions exactly the same, which is cool because you don't have to worry about wear and tear on the physical drive itself or also the disc, which as you know, can, well, they can degrade over time. They can get scratched. And the reason why I haven't jumped into the mode just yet is because one, I don't know if I trust myself to install it. I've looked at videos and it looks like it's pretty simple. But the other thing is, and I'm kind of looking for your help here, I'm not sure which system I should put it in. Should I put it in the Sega Saturn, which has an amazing lineup of import games? Or should I put it in the Dreamcast, which is a little bit newer, has an amazing US lineup of games? I can't decide. So I don't know. I mean, let me know down in the comments which console you think I should install it into. Also, let me know if you are using EverDrives in your game room. And this video is not meant to be a deep dive of the features of each one of these. Instead, it's meant to be just an overview of what's available out there. But I do recommend that you check out a YouTube channel called My Life in Gaming, which has dedicated hardcore videos about each of the features included in each one of these devices. Sometimes they'll spend like an hour on each one, really getting into the nitty gritty. It's an awesome channel, so definitely check it out if you wanna know more. And as always guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.